So we looked at those concepts of force and torque and understanding what a force is, one body pushing on another, and understanding what that torque is, is that twisting force. So that, uh, that, uh, that force that's trying to make something rotate or make something twist. The next step then in getting toward our power, understanding of power, is to look at work and energy. So when we talk about work, how much work we do, we're talking about the force, some force that's applied through some distance. So a good example of that is to think about a, a power lifter, somebody that's lifting a barbell off the floor. As we see here, let's say that we are trying to, uh, you know, we're, we're doing some work. So we've got this barbell, I wanna lift it up off the floor. How much work do I do? Well, again, it's the force applied through some distance. So thinking about a barbell, let's say that for example, on our barbell, it's 300 pounds. So I've got this barbell sitting on the floor, 300 pounds. I'm going to bend down and I'm going to lift that up. So a power lifter might lift that barbell, let's say 24 inches or two feet. So we're going to lift it up two feet. So 300 pounds times two feet. So I'm lifting that barbell through a distance of two feet. That's 300 times two feet. That's 600 foot pounds of work that I'm doing. So now hold on a minute. Units, uh, foot pounds, isn't that what we just talked about with torque? Yeah, it's the same unit. So we got to kind of be careful because this can get a little bit confusing to understand these units because torque and energy really are the same kind of unit. It's the same basic unit. So it is force applied through some distance. But now it's, think about I'm moving something, I'm making something move. So to do some work, I'm making something move. I'm lifting that barbell. It could be a horizontal thing. I could be pulling it along. We're gonna see it, it could also be a rotational thing. So it's something is rotating. How much torque did I apply to that thing, to that shaft, for instance? And how far did that shaft rotate? That becomes work. That's how much work that that shaft is doing, okay? So that's what work is. It's a force applied through some distance. Now, this is kind of splitting hairs a little bit, but what is energy? Energy, the definition of energy, is the capacity to do work. So if I'm a power lifter and I grab that barbell and I lift it up in the air and I said that I did 600 foot-pounds of work, that means that somewhere in the reserves in my body, I had to have 600 foot-pounds of energy there to be able to do that. If I didn't have that energy, I wouldn't have it to exert to be able to do that work. So the energy is the capacity to do work. The work is what we actually did with that energy, okay? And it's the units are the same thing. Now, some people will get, again, physicists and folks like that, they really get split in hairs. Then there's a lot of detail that we could spend a lot of time discussing here, and we won't. So for this class, for our discussion purposes and engines, we're kind of think of them as the same thing. Work is what we did, energy is what it took to do that work. Same kind of unit. So what you'll often see people doing is saying, hey, if I'm talking about work, I'm going to talk about pound feet or in the SI Newton meters. Now, if I'm looking at the energy, I'm going to flip those units around. Does it matter mathematically? No, not really. But it kind of gives an indication whether I'm talking about work or whether I'm talking about energy. So they'll say pound feet instead of foot pounds, okay? And they'll talk about uh, this this Newton meter, or they actually will use a joule, so it's a different unit in the SI unit. <clears throat> a joule is a Newton meter. We'll come back to these units more and work with these units and make sure that we understand what they all mean. So we'll do some examples on that, okay? So that's what we're using in the SI system. We're using joules. You'll also see in the English unit a BTU, and that's a British thermal unit. We will come back to those more and get and understand what those units mean, uh, where we go with those, but that's what that that's what those units are. So it's a unit of energy, how much energy that it has. Now this is going to really come back and become important to us when we look at the fuel usage of an engine. So that fuel that we put into an engine has a certain amount of energy associated with it. So it's got so many BTUs or joules 
per gallon or per volume or per weight or whatever. So there's a certain amount of energy in that fuel that I stick into that engine. And then we'll look at, okay, how much energy do I get out of the engine? So if I know what's going in and what's going out, then I can start to look at the efficiency of that engine. How good is it as it, at converting the energy that's available into some useful work downstream? So we'll look at some of those concepts as well. But that's what work and energy is. It's how much work that I do. Now, let's talk about power. What's the next step? So work and energy, barbell, that think about that work, that barbell, that power lifter who's lifting that barbell off the ground, that lifter did so much work in lifting that weight off of that ground, off the ground. Now, power takes it one step further and says, how fast did you do that? So I lifted that barbell off the ground. Now, did it take me a long time and I was straining and wiggling and it, it took me, you know, 15, 20 seconds to get that barbell off the ground? Or was I able to reach down, grab that barbell and just pop it up in the air? And here's where there's kind of a misnomer when we talk about a power lifter. A lifter is only using a lot of power if they're doing that work at a high rate of speed. So if I lift that fast, then I've put in a lot of power. If I lifted it really slow, I didn't put a whole lot of power into it. And so you could have a power lifter that's not really using a lot of power. They're just doing a lot of work. Ooh, okay, so the terminology gets a little squirrely here. But again, this is what we're after is understanding the power output of an engine. How do I measure that and what is it? So go back. It is the rate at which work is being done. How fast am I doing the work? So the units that we're going to be looking at are the work that we do, how much work we do per unit time. So that's it. Work per unit time. What does that look like? Break that out. What does work? We just said that's some force that we're applying across some distance and we're doing that in a certain amount of time. So that force times that distance divided by the time it took me to do that. So break that down a little bit further. That is a pound foot force distance, pound foot per second. Now, when we talk about engine output, we don't say how many foot pounds per second did that engine produce? No, what we're commonly used to hearing is horsepower. And we'll see that a horsepower is directly related to a pound foot per second. So there's a conversion factor there, but essentially a foot pound per second is the fundamental unit, the fundamental component of a horsepower, of what one horsepower is. And that we have some idea of what that horsepower output of an engine is or something like that. So that's what we can work with. So that's what power is. Okay, now let's break this down in the SI system. It actually ends up being a little bit simpler. So in the SI system, force distance time, that's a Newton meter per second. And in the SI system, a Newton meter per second is a watt, a W. So that's a watt. That's how we measure power in the SI system. Now, when it comes to engines, a watt is generally really small. So a lot of times we'll actually use kilowatts. So it'll be thousands of watts. And when it comes down to it, one kilowatt is fairly close on the same order of magnitude of a horsepower. So it's a conversion there of about three quarters or something like that. So a horsepower and a kilowatt or a thousand watts are going to be pretty similar. And so that's what we're going with. That's the, that's the, uh, the fundamental units and the fundamental part of this. So again, Keep in mind, it's how much work is being done in a certain amount of time. How fast am I able to do work? Okay, now this could be linear, and we're going to do some examples where we have a force that we're applying, and I'm pulling something, so how much force can I apply? How far can I drag it? How fast can I drag it? That's how much power that I'm exerting. So we can take that force to work and to power. But we can do the same thing with rotation as well. I said we still have that torque and speed. Oh yeah, foot pounds, same unit, all that kind of stuff. So the way we calculate rotational power is that we take that torque, which is my foot pounds, multiply it by my speed. My speed is gonna be like in revolutions per minute. So that puts the revolutions here. The per minute ends up being in a denominator. So we get a foot pounds per second. That becomes my power. Woo, I just kind of went a little deep, a lot of units. 
everybody's going hold on a minute can you do an example yeah that's what we're going to do in the next video is run through some examples we'll see what these numbers look like we'll see what these conversions are but this is the fundamental concept how much force can i apply or torque if it's a rotational force how far is that being applied you know how far am i doing it and how fast is that being done that's what my power is okay so again we're going to go from here do some examples to really understand how you calculate this stuff